Good morning. When you're out and about in the new forest, there are lots of things to see and do, and many of these are free. This is the second video in this series, with five more suggestions for places to visit that are free. If you haven't seen the first video, there's a link at the top of the screen now, and also in the text below. Our first suggestion is a visit to Buckler's Hard. This is a lovely village that sits alongside the Bewley River. Although people live and work here, Buckler's Hard today is mainly a tourist attraction. It's hard to believe that this was once an important shipbuilding yard, with contracts to build ships for the Royal Navy. The original chapel is still here, and it's open to visitors. Next door is a ship workers cottage and we can see how the family would have lived 200 years ago. Just one bedroom with all the family sleeping together. The parents bed has some curtains to give them a bit of privacy. There's a hotel and pub here, and also a museum, where you can explore the history of Buckler's Hard. This model in the museum shows us what the village would have looked like 250 years ago. We can see lengths of wood, mainly oak, everywhere, as of course the ships here were made from wood, much of which came from the New Forest. All built by hand, no power tools. Shipbuilding died out here when ships started to be made of iron, in the 19th century. Entry to Buckler's Hard is free, but you do need to pay for parking. There's also a charge to go into the museum. I've made a longer video of Buckler's Hard, and there should be a link at the top of the page now, and also in the text below. Our second suggestion is out here in the middle of the forest a couple of miles west of Lyndhurst. We've come to see one of the more unexpected sights in the forest, and it's just beyond this oak tree. We're walking towards the Portuguese fireplace. So what's it doing here? During the First World War, there was a huge demand for timber, and the Canadian government sent over about 1,500 lumberjacks, who set up the first camp in this area. As the war progressed, more men were needed in France, and some of the Canadians went off to fight. In 1917, an army unit from Portugal took their places at the sawmill, with a camp being built especially for them. After the war, the camp was demolished, but this fireplace was left standing as a memorial to the Portuguese and Canadian men who helped the war effort here in the New Forest. If you'd like to visit the fireplace yourself, the nearest car park is Milliford Bridge and the What Three Words location is saints.choice.looms. Our third suggestion is quite close to the Portuguese fireplace. It's in one of the oldest parts of the New Forest. We're here to see a tree, the Nightwood Oak. This is one of the most famous, if not the most famous, tree in the New Forest. The Nightwood Oak is reckoned to be over 500 years old. Think about that. 500 years ago, Henry VIII was King of England, and astronomers still thought the Sun revolved around the Earth. When Queen Victoria was born, the Nightwood Oak tree would have been about 300 years old. Here it is in front of us, inside of a picket fence. We can see that the top branches have been shortened. This is called pollarding and was done to provide wood without killing the tree. It was first pollarded when it was about 200 years old and is thought to have been last pollarded in the mid 19th century. The tree has a girth of 24.2 feet and is still growing. This is how the tree looks in the winter. And this is how the nightwood oak looks in the summer, with leaves on the tree. 
The what three words location for the car park near the Nightwood Oak is gently.vineyard.prospers. Our fourth suggestion is in the Ashley Walk Valley in the north of the New Forest. During the Second World War this valley was fenced off and used as a training area for bomber crews and to test new bombs. A number of targets were set up in the valley, most of these had now disappeared. What we're going to see though is a huge concrete arrow. As you walk along the main track across Ashley Walk the arrow is very easy to miss if you don't know the precise location. We missed it twice before we found it. The concrete arrow here was used to point the bomber crews towards their target at the bottom of the valley. The arrow and the target were both illuminated at night to enable night bombing training. The target is no longer to be seen down in the valley, but the arrow is certainly still here. It's very impressive. If you didn't know why it was here and you stumbled across this arrow, you probably never guessed that it helped the Allies to win the Second World War. To help you to find it, if you want to see it, the what three words location is defense.senses.satin. Our fifth suggestion is to walk along the sea wall at Lymington, ending at the Nature Reserve. The various ways to get to the sea wall, an interesting way is to park in Bath Road Car Park in Lymington and walk around by the Yacht Marina and the Saltwater Swimming Pool. There are other car parks nearby if Bath Road is full. Make your way along the path until you come to the Yacht Haven where you'll see boats for sale. Head south here and you'll arrive at a path with bushes either side. Follow the path and you'll come out onto the sea wall. You can see the sea and the Isle of Wight to your left and an inland lake to your right. There are seabirds and waders here and often there's a rarity to spot. This is an oyster catcher. And this is an egret. And here we've got a lapwing, or green plover, standing on one leg. This video at the sea wall was filmed in May, when the birds were breeding. On this island, gulls are rearing their young. Here's a beautiful avocet, with distinctive upturned bill with her chick. There are bird hides here where you can watch the birds. The sea wall here is part of the Solent Way which runs for 60 miles so you can make your walk as long or as short as you like. You can take a circular route back to the car park or retrace your footsteps and find your way back at the Yacht Marina and the Saltwater Swimming Pool. So there's five more suggestions for things to see and do in the New Forest without having to spend any money. I hope you found these suggestions interesting. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel to help it grow. Thanks for watching.